What is the best outcome from the Loya Jarga other than it being passed? Is this something that you feel uh, should have happened? And then how do you see its impact on 2014? How do you see 2014? Well, the agreement we're, we're, we're in the process of concluding with Afghanistan, a bilateral security agreement, is designed to provide a legal basis for a continuing American military presence in Afghanistan uh, from 2015 on. That presence will, for the most part, not be a combat presence. It'll be a presence designed to advise, assist, and train uh, Afghan security forces. Um, there will be a small counterterrorism element of it, but in, it, it'll be dominantly a non-combat a non advisory uh, presence. Um, and we need uh, an invitation. We're not going to stay if we're not invited to stay, and this is the mechanism. Um, there will be a grand council, lawyer Jirga is what that means, that the President Karzai has called to put this agreement before a large body, 2,500 people, who will look at it and provide opinions. It's not dispositive. It's the Parliament that has to ratify it after the President signs it. But it will influence both of those. Uh, so far, opinion has been very positive across the spectrum. In fact, only one Afghan political figure has come out against this agreement, and that was Mullah Omar when he issued a statement the day after Secretary Kerry uh, visited and concluded uh, negotiating most of the substantive uh, uh, elements of it. And he's, of course, not going to be participating in the Loya Jirga. So I'm pretty confident that that will uh, produce a, a positive result. Uh, I do think that, as you said, there are a number of transitions coming up. There's the military transition um, uh, as, uh, as U.S. and NATO forces draw down to a much smaller number. Uh, but the most important transition is the political transition. It's, it's the election. Um, uh, this is the third democratic election uh, that they will have held for president. They've held uh, democratic elections on different dates for parliament as well. Um, so far, it's the best prepared of the elections they've had. The Taliban will try to disrupt it. Uh, we can anticipate that there'll be violence and an effort to disrupt uh, elections. They've tried and failed before, and they'll undoubtedly try again. Um, elections are, by their very nature, polarizing uh, 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 processes to some degree. Um, uh, but this one also has to be a unifying process. It needs to, re it needs to have a clear-cut result that the Afghan people and the international community, but most importantly, the Afghan people can accept. Um, uh, and uh, it, it is shaping up in a manner that's likely to do that. Uh, but as a case in, in elections and conflict zones uh, in less developed societies, um, they're not sure things. Um, I mean, we've had hung elections that went to the Supreme Court, and they don't have anything like the uh, uh, you know, the developed capacity to manage that kind of uh, electoral uh, indecisive results. So one has to hope that the election does produce, as the previous elections have, clear-cut results that are widely accepted.